You know, now that we have 1.5 confirmed to last another two months, I figured it was time to finally talk about post restriction green and how awesome I think it is in this format. Let's get started. Welcome back everyone, my name is Steven Rodriguez, I'm your true champion, and that is right, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a non-yellow deck for once, and that's going to be my green Sarismon post-restriction deck for the 1.5 format. Now, this deck has been getting a weird rep recently where everyone says like it's unplayable or it's bad now. I'm gonna just go ahead and squash those rumors or those doubts right now. This deck is still awesome. And with all these new like control the archetypes coming about, having a steady just source of tempo and beatdown like green does is actually gonna be a big, big plus for the deck moving forward in the 1.5 format. And with the recent announcement that 1.5 is gonna last a lot longer than we thought it would, having a deck like this to fall back on if you ever want to is a super cool thing. So hopefully everything I have to say today will help you guys understand sort of where green lies, as well as what an overall post restriction list green deck should look like. Uh, there are tons of options and personalizability in this deck, like always. So if you do have any suggestions or changes you wanna make, feel free to do so. If you guys are excited for the continuation of some awesome Digimon content, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, click that bell for notifications so you know when my videos go live for you. And if there's any lingering questions in this video or you wanna to talk to me about other decks that exist right now that you're excited about, be sure to follow me over on Twitch. I go live all the time and we talk about this game non-stop. So feel free to come stop by and we can get a fun conversation going. Links to my Twitch down below as always. But enough dilly-dallying, let's go ahead and head to the card by card. All right, boys and girls, here we are at the brand new tabletop setup on my new desk. I'm actually in love with this new desk, but I'm also in love with my current post restriction green deck, which is right here. The main things I try to do when it comes to sort of uh, building this deck for post restriction was maintain its consistency. I felt it had uh, pre restriction. I'll get into what that means throughout the deck list, but I wanted to make sure that the deck felt and flowed pretty much the same exact way. Way, even though we do have to play some clunkier cards within the deck. I've tried to maximize its way of gaining DP as well as maximizing the ability to rest or suspend opponent Digimon because that is the main way this deck gains advantage and pressures the opponent. And as always, when it comes to talking about our cards, we're gonna start off with the Digi Eggs or Digitama. We are playing the full five in this deck because that free five filter is always nice. We have four copies of Minomon and one copy of the Argamon level two, both from set 1.5. Now, Minamon is the main egg because, like I said, gaining power is super clutch. It's not only nice to make sure your dudes live when they attack security, but also make sure they can swing over your opponent's Digimon. And when you do want to gain control, you can. This is super nice with our ultimates and really, really nice with our Megas. So that way we can swing over pretty much anything that's 12,000 DP or more uh, without the need of much else. And then the one copy of Argamon here, we're not going full max on power gain. You could play like a Tainamon here if you really wanted to, but I have found the one Argamon to actually come in super clutch. I mean, you can never have too much memory or too much resources and getting that extra one is super nice for flower cannon plays, for download plays, and for overall just a nice source of resources every single turn. And against like early game yellow decks or even late game mirror match, this one memory can come in clutch. But like I said, the one of Tainamon would be a nice replacement for this deck if you were super worried about power gain against specifically red decks. And moving on to level threes, we have of course four copies of green Agumon, the best, most generic level three for green right now. Getting that plus 1000 DP is always clutch for letting our dude swing into security or swinging into our opponent's rested Digimon. We also have four copies of Gobbly and four copies of Argo for Vanillas. We're running the full copies of eight because essentially, if you have these, you can accelerate your board presence to gain pressure. And you can also have really good sources of download fodder. You can essentially turn pretty much any evolution cost in your deck into a two cost, thanks to these guys. And the more they linger on board, the more advantage and just overall tempo you can gain. So maxing on these is a super big deal. Also, the extra memory modification against your opponent is just a bonus. 
And rounding off, we have, of course, three copies of Terrier giving us 15 rookies in total. This used to be 16, uh, but that was back when we had four copies of Argamon level five to accelerate rookies into play and get extra pressure slash board presence out of nowhere. But now that we can't play four of him, having that 15th is actually more than good and can open up space for other Digimon in the deck. And the reason why we're playing Terriermon over a card like Tentomon or Aruba is because it's just like generically the best one. It comes up against blue decks, it comes up against yellow decks. Heck, it could even come up against red decks if they attack with their uncommon Biumon that gains a memory. Uh, being able to deny non-tamer memory addition is super nice, and this comes up all the time. But that's it for the level 3s. Moving on to the level 4s, we're actually playing a gigantic amount of them. I think 13 in total, uh, because the ability to not only uh, utilize our rookies for download fodder, but also free cycle ability is super nice. So I like having a good number of level fours for just overall filter and cycle through the deck. Starting off, we have our power gainers, four copies of Kabuterimon and two copies of Gargamon. The reason why we play more Kabuterimon opposed to Gargamon is because he's 5,000 DP and cannot be killed by cards like Volcanic Dramon, uh, where Gargamon can. So even though Gargamon is one cost cheaper to play, you're almost never going to hard play these things unless you're in a really weird situation anyway. And so I'd rather have Kabuterimon for when things are good. And these both have the same effect, by the way. Your turn, get plus 1,000 DP for each of your opponent's suspended Digimon. Super good. Uh, we'll get into why power gainers are so important once we get to the Megas, but just know having plenty of them in your deck is always a good thing. If you can find the room for more, be sure to do so. Up next, we have some generic, just good level fours in the form of Vegemon. It's basically, you know, three more rookies, but they have 6,000 DP. And because we play Mimi, we can actually choke our opponent a lot more often with this card while also making our board wide and playing around things like Alter S. Because if our ultimates get de-digivolved, this thing is 6,000 DP, so it won't die. If we just hard play it, it can't be de-digivolved, etc., etc. Super good card for the red matchup and just a generically strong card for green. Uh, mint, like period. <laughs> Rounding off our level fours, we have two copies of Argamon level four and two copies of Togemon. This is where that like consistency thing I was talking about and keeping it the same as it was pre-restriction comes up. Before the restriction, we were playing 11 Digisorption cards. Well, post-restriction, thanks to this Argamon, as well as our extra copy of Blossom, I'll get to in a second, we are still playing 11 targets for Digisorption, so our Sarismon ability to rest or suspend has not diminished at all, which is super cool. And that's where the Argamons come in. Where the Togemons come in is our ultimate and mega count has stayed exactly the same. So why wouldn't I still keep the Togemon in here? Because if you don't draw megas or you don't draw ultimates with this deck, you just lose. So having that little extra way to dig for them is super big for your deck's consistency. And overall, Togemon's just a good card. I mean, if you go first, open like hard play a two drop pass your opponent gives you one memory you evolve into this give them one back add a card to your hand while having two units already established in play you can do some really big combos on the following turn so i just love togemon for her ability to keep the deck flowing nice as well as just have plenty of powerful top end digimon in hand at all times now you will notice out of the 13 level fours we're playing, we're not playing any copies of Woodmon, the level four blocker. I have decided that blockers are not necessarily needed in this deck. You're already taking a hard lose to Rookie Rush anyway, and even though they are 6,000 DP and can play around Alter S, I think Vegemon is more than enough to accomplish that goal and does it for a cheaper memory cost. And we were already going to be super high on two cost evolution level fours by including the Togas and including the Argamon level fours. So I figured not playing Woodmon was the best way to go for the deck's overall flow. But I totally understand if you think blockers should be in this deck because you just are so afraid of dying all the time. But here's one thing I'll tell you just to kind of put your mind at ease in case you didn't already know this. This deck is kind of at its core a board control slash board tempo deck. And so that means anytime your opponent plays something, if you have the ability to kill that said thing, you will. So you're just going to naturally get rid and deter your opponent's aggression until they go for like some big like raising area play. But by then you can cause a lot of pressure yourself and they might be worried about going for damage or clearing your board. So I think you can play around the fact that you don't have level four blockers and and I am playing a card in the level five spot that does fix this problem a bit for us. So don't worry too much about having no level four blockers. I honestly don't think it matters that much. 
Moving on to our level fives, we have, of course, four copies of Blossomon and one copy of Argamon level five as our downloaders slash Digizorbers. Originally, I was playing three and four, but now I have to go down to five because Bandai said so. Um, this is just a generic Digizorb three, super nice free evolution, probably the best level five you have and you want to see her all the time. Argamon, though, is just a super powerhouse card. If you do see it and get to get the free rookie in play, that's super clutch and nice, but their main purpose in the deck is to get us the level sixes faster, as well as serve for download fodder or your Saris Mons so you can have extra control. Other than that, they're just cards. Moving on to the other level five that I'm playing to help sort of replace Argamon level five, we have two copies of Cherry Mon, the blocker for level five. This sort of validates the fact that we're not playing blockers in level four because Cherry Mon is more than enough to protect you in the late, late game from dying, but also kind of deter aggression in the early turns. Having that extra DP actually helps as well in doing that. And because of all the power gainers we play and the fact that he can attack and not lose you memory, he can actually get pretty big himself and just swing over threats early if you get like a flower cannon or something. So Cherry Mon's super dope. Rounding off, we have two copies of Rapid Mon, the last power gainer that we're playing. Um, I contemplating playing just four of it, but I don't really face Red Omni enough to warrant that. But I'm also like not too worried about the matchup because of everything else we're playing. But I will just stress and show you guys this right now that if you have all four power gainers, underneath a Saris Mon and your opponent's Omnimon is rested, you can instantly swing into it. If they have even one other rested unit in play, it'll make it even easier on you and you need actually less cards. Um, so this is the big, big thing we're trying to play by, by playing as many uh, power gainers as possible is to get rid of a rested Omni the turn our opponent plays it. Uh, it's going to be a big, big thing. Uh, Ultra Rest is super scary for this deck, but we play our counters and hopefully they're gonna be enough. Regardless, moving on to our level sixes, we have, of course, the Queen of Green herself, four copies of Sarismon. I have talked about this card so many times on this channel that I feel like I've beaten her to death, but this is just the best boss monster right now. It lets you accelerate, it lets you control, and it's a gigantic body that you can make even bigger and swing for damage. What more do I need to say? And up next, we have two copies of Mega Gargamon and one copy of Boncho Stingmon. I am still rocking this lineup. If I play against more Red Omni, or I think if I fight against more Red Omni, maybe I'll switch it back and forth between these two cards. But right now, this has done very, very well for me. Mega Gargo being the mini puppet plus security attacker for the deck is super clutch. And then Boncho Sting being the Omnimon counter on a body is a super clutch and can just be a nice source of extra damage against mirror match, against Imperial Blue, or against anything that plays something with 12,000 DP or higher. Uh, honestly, these cards are super clutch. I have kind of playing, playing just a hard second Boncho in the main, but for now, this is more than enough. Another level six you could consider, by the way, if you want to like add to your Digisorption count is of course Argamon level six. The reason why we're not playing that and we settle on going for the level four Argo is because all Argamon are called Argamon. And if we fight against Red Omni and have an Argamon level three and like an Argamon level six and he gets to kill both those cards, it super hurts our deck. But if we have an Argamon level three and an Argamon level four and they choose to kill both, chances are that's not as bad. So I definitely like having this just to minimize the amount of punishment we can get against a regular set one Omni. So that's it for our Digimon count, the main fuel for this deck, the way we win, the way we draw. And now moving on to our Tamers, we have three copies of Mimi Tachikawa. This replaced our three other copies of Hidden Potential. Um, this card's amazing. I've said time and time again, Mimi should have always been in this deck, even pre-restriction. And now that we kind of like are forced to play her, it's just like a big, big bonus. Uh, this adds to your ability to cycle. This adds to your board presence for download fodder. And overall, it's just a super clutch card. If you ever open this, like you're never going to have a bad game. This deck can do so much on three memory. It's kind of crazy. And rounding off, we have our option cards, two copies of Flower Cannon and one copy of Hidden Potential. I tried to play more, but again, Bandai got on the phone and said, no, you can't do that. So we're playing one because we can. And then, of course, we have two copies of Flower Cannon. You don't always draw the nuts. You don't always have Saris and play to rest stuff. Sometimes you have to just force things to get rested. And thanks to Mimi guaranteeing you memory, this can come up a lot more often. And having the access to this and the security to save your butt whenever you need it is just a nice little bonus. Uh, this card's always clutch when you see it. It's never not. Play it at two. I promise you it's going to be awesome for you. 
And boom, there you guys go. That'll go ahead and do it for my post restriction green deck list for the Digimon TCG set 1.5 format. If you guys did enjoy or have any lingering questions, be sure to let me know in the comments below and follow me over on Twitch. Link is down below. I go live all the time and I talk about this game nonstop. So feel free to come stop by, ask your questions live in person, and we can hopefully have a nice little chat. And as always, I have been your true champion, Steven. Please be sure to work hard, rest easy, and live well. And I will see you all next time. Peace.